head of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Pardon has arrived in Iran for talks on the eve of Tehran's deadline for U.S. sanctions to be lifted. Rafael Mariano Grossi was uh, received in Tehran um, uh, by Iran's ambassador to the IAEA, Qasem Qarib Abadi, uh, and a spokesman for the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran, Behruz Kamalvandi. Grossi said he is uh, seeking a solution for the agency to continue its verification work in Iran. The country's parliament passed a law in December that requires the government to block IAEA SNAP inspections from February 23rd, among other measures, if U.S. sanctions are not lifted by then. Now, Iran and the U.S. are locked in a standoff over salvaging the 2015 nuclear deal with both sides calling on the other to act first. And uh, Iran's Deputy Foreign Minister Abbas Adok, she says U.S.'s so-called maximum pressure policy against Iran has failed. Speaking on state TV, Adok, she stressed, despite U.S. withdrawal from the deal, Iran has completely complied with its nuclear commitments. Arakchi said that Tehran is studying European Union's proposal to hold an informal meeting of four plus one with the U.S. and Iran. He said that Tehran is consulting with its partners, including China and Russia, and will respond to the proposal in the future. Regarding Iran's deadline to block SNAP inspections of its nuclear sites, Arakchi said that UN watchdog surveillance ability will be reduced by up to 30 percent if anti-Iran sanctions aren't lifted. He reiterated that the measure does not mean that Iran withdraws from the JCPOA. And now joining us for this news review is uh, Tim Anderson, director of the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, joining us out of Sydney, and Eve Engler, author and commentator, joining us out of Montreal. Gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you both to the program. I guess we'll start there with you, Tim, in uh, Sydney. Your thoughts on the developments with respect to the JCPOA and the standoff we're seeing today between Washington and Tehran. Yes, thank you. Uh, I think it seems that Mr. Grossi is taking a respectful approach to uh, what Iran has established in its own law, but we have to remember at the beginning that this is a process which is entirely unbalanced contrary to the idea of politics or Iran being singled out. So how much longer it's going to go on it has to be in question. And I think the, the withdrawal of the non-nuclear verification is something that uh, should be a foregone conclusion, really. I'm not sure really why there was any justification for allowing inspection of Iran's military sites which don't have uh, Thanks. And Eve, I'd like to welcome you to the program. A lot of people may be asking the question, what's Rafael Grossi even doing in Tehran? This is an issue that, could, that needs to be resolved between Washington and Tehran if the JCPOA is going to get revived again. All, these, uh, you know, all the compliance out of Tehran will you know, get back to, its, uh, back to where it was when the JCPOA was alive. Uh, your thoughts on what's going on today, uh, Eves? Yeah, I don't. I don't even really think this is about a negotiation between <clears throat> uh, Washington and Tehran. I think it's just a matter of the Biden administration doing what it said it's, it was going to do, uh, and returning to the JCPOA, which is really about uh, lifting sanctions on Iran. Uh, obviously, Iran is not going to comply with uh, uh, inspections and measures. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be complying with inspections and measures based upon having uh, you know sanctions lifted. So, so this is really a matter of it's in it's in the Washington's court. Uh, I think the Biden administration should. Uh, begin the process of lifting sanctions, and and I think that uh, Iran will uh, will uh, respond uh, in kind. And that's the thing, Tim. Uh, you know, Iran's uh, Adarchi, Iran's uh, Dr. Zarif, Iran's President Rouhani, the the leader, they've all said the U.S. has to take the first step. It was the U.S. that opted out. It has to be the U.S. that opts back in if there's going to be a JCPOA, if there is going to be uh, compliance from Tehran. So where is the ambiguity and what's the holdup? 
I think the holdup is that the Eden administration has made it clear that it's not going to reverse all of Trump's measures. They're not going to, they don't want to go back to 2000. Because the JCPO is really just a tool to try and control the influence of Iran in the region. That's why they have the little helpers, like the President of France, Mr. Macron, talking about including missile technology, including the Saudis, all of these sorts of things. They want to use it as leverage, but they've burnt up their political capital. So Iran remains in a very strong diplomatic position. It just has to hold on to its position, whether the war uh, of words, I guess. And, and Eves, uh, what do you think in response to uh, Tim's uh, uh, comments there? Is that basically what this is? Is the JCPOA just a tool, as Washington may see, for it to try to contain Iran? And at this point, then why is Joe Biden basically making so many uh, subtle overtures that he's interested in getting fully back into the penumbra and, uh, you know, to the, into the stipulations of the JCPOA? Yeah, <clears throat> I think it's partly that. I think it's partly a, a way of strengthening U.S. position in the Middle East. Uh, but I also think it's a it's a positive thing. I think we need to go. We actually need to go much further and move towards a nuclear free Middle East. Uh, and of course, uh, the U.S. is not on board for that. The U.S. opposes that because Israel, its its uh, its main ally, has uh, has nuclear weapons. There was you know almost the whole world uh, about two months ago, or maybe about three months ago now. At the UN General Assembly, uh, I forget the exact number, but 155, 158 countries uh, voted to, to support the, that uh, there are inspections, that the Israel joins the International Atomic Energy Agency inspections, and that uh, their process of, of, uh, of eliminating uh, 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 nuclear weapons. Uh, and, and, and I think that uh, the a move towards a nuclear-free Middle East is really the direction that people uh, should be pushing. So you don't have one country, Israel, which is the one country making uh, the, you know, the main thrust of the criticism of, of Iran and its potential uh, to have nuclear weapons. Uh, the absurdity of that is just you know, is, is obvious to anyone who thinks about it. Why should this nuclear armed state have any uh, criticism of another country potentially uh, getting nuclear weapons? So I think that that's the kind of broader uh, direction things could go because nuclear weapons are you know, obviously a very you know a terrible thing and they, they really should be eliminated across the board but certainly uh, you know eliminated within the Middle East uh, and then you know gradually uh, everywhere else. Good stuff and uh, Tim uh, your final thoughts basically on how you see this whole entire thing playing out in the days to come. Yes I think Eves is right I think the JCPO is really a dead letter it's just a question of when and how it's going to die. And the idea of a nuclear free Middle East and uh, requiring uh, Israeli to come into that fold is, I think, an important diplomatic initiative. It was made almost a decade ago and failed narrowly. So there is a possibility at the UN of getting more countries on board and shifting the diplomatic uh, initiative over to that rather than um, flogging this dead horse that is the JCPOA. Thank you, Eves. We have about 40 seconds left, but your final thoughts as well, please. Well, I just think that it's really important for people who are, you know, in the U.S., uh, people who are in Canada, to, you know, raise these issues with our governments. Right? We need to, we need to be pressuring our government. The Canadian government voted against uh, IAEA inspections in, in Israel. Uh, uh, the Canadian government's been, you know, voting against these these uh, resolutions and basically a, a, a enabling Israel to have this you know, nuclear stockpile while making a big deal about Iran's potential. Um, and I think that's a matter of, you know, people in these countries, you know, taking it up with their governments and pressuring their governments to, uh, to become a bit more uh, serious about these issues or sensible about these issues. Gentlemen, thank you both for showing up and joining us on this program with your uh, respective perspective on things. Tim Anderson joining us out of uh, Sydney there and Mr. Eves Angler joining us out of Montreal. Viewers, that's a wrap for this segment of your Press TV's News Review program. Thank you for tuning in and goodbye for now.